There are many different theories on where the beginning of life and the beginning of intelligent life started in our universe. Does it go all the way back to the Big Bang or does it start here on a tiny rock? Does it start with a thunderous bolt of lightning or does it spark from a bunch of monkeys who just wanted to go for a swim? Who knows? But today we will try and get some answers. Hey everyone, Dewey Stewart back and ready with another interesting and even deep video today because today we are counting down the top 10 unsettling human origin theories that might be true. So get ready because some of these might throw you for a bit of a loop, but don't worry, I'm here. Now enough coddling, let's get to it. Starting us off in our number 10 spot, we have the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, remember those movies that were made in the 70s and then were rebooted to death? Well, they may not have been too off the mark. It is pretty well known that we have evolved from primates, but what is not known is how these slightly less intelligent animals became us humans who are now trying to create the perfect AI. <laughs> oh man, stop doing that by the way, we are already at war with ourselves, let's not add freak and robots to the mix, please. Thank you. According to the anthropologist Raymond Dart, we evolved not just from our ape ancestors, but mainly from our ape killing ancestors. That was how our ape ancestors established dominance and slowly became intelligent beings. Gray matter, like our brains, also needs 20 times more energy than what muscle does, and it is believed that the meats that are high in protein and fat are what helped develop our brains. Once we started cooking, we used less energy to eat the tough food, and we used the extra energy and nutrients into our brains. So we quite literally may have just come out on top from eating meat and cooking stuff. Coming in at number 9, we have the planet of the kind apes. Yeah, so maybe that last theory about our ancient ape friends isn't as true as we thought it might be. At least maybe. In the 1960s, the killer ape theory gave way to the hippie ape theory. Which it was the 60s, so of course it did, dude. I mean, peace and love, bro, huh? But hey, I don't mind it. Anthropologist Glenn Isaac dug up evidence of animal carcasses that she believed was proof of these foods being relocated to areas where they could be shared with the rest of the commune. As Isaac saw it as well, the sharing of food led to the sharing of information of where other food could be found and skills as well, which then led us to evolve to the extremely kind human beings we are today. Remember that old saying that sharing is caring? Well, it looks like in this theory it holds lots of merit, and maybe we should remind ourselves about this every now and then. Coming in at our number 8 spot, we have Planet of the Swimming Apes. That's right, not just any kind of swimming apes, but also skinny dipping swimming apes. Near the end of the 60s, we donned the age of Aquarius, well at least in music. But after the other ape theories, Elaine Morgan, who is a TV documentary writer, made the claim that humans are way different than other primates because our actual ancestors evolved in different environments, such as water. For the apes that could swim, in order to properly navigate the waters a bit faster with more ease, they eventually lost their hair and standing upright gave them the ability to wade in water as well. Now, let me just say that this theory is widely dismissed in the scientific community, but just back in 2013, world famous David Attenborough actually endorsed it. And he is a pretty intelligent guy if I do say so myself, so I think after this video we all need to do a little bit more research on that one because if he says it, man I almost have to believe him. Coming in at our number 7 spot, we have molecules meeting on clay. According to organic chemist Alexander Graham Karen Smith, the early forms of the first life on earth could have arisen out of molecules that met each other on and inside of clay. These surfaces may not have only concentrated these compounds together, but they may have also helped organize them into patterns that are much like our genes that are formed now. The main function of DNA is to hold information on how molecules should be arranged. Now, Karen Smith believes that the mineral crystals in clay could have arranged organic molecules into these organized patterns and after a while the organic molecules took over the job and organized themselves. Pretty cool, huh? Well, not as cool as killing or hippie apes, but I'll take it, I guess. Coming in at our number six spot, we have deep sea vents. This theory involves all of us humans a long, long time ago just starting to pop out of these deep sea vents and floating up to the surface. From there, we met our underwater brethren and began to take over the world. <laughs> Once again, guys, you all know me, so I am just kidding. This deep sea vent theory actually suggests that the first signs of life may have erupted out of these submarine hydrothermal vents that spewed key rich hydrogen molecules. The rocky nooks could have have concentrated the molecules together and provided mineral catalysts for some critical reactions. Even now, these vents help support some pretty vibrant ecosystems, so who's to say that all life hasn't originated from there as well? Now, I remember when I was young and I was always feeling at home in the water, and I was thinking like I was, I'd pretend to smash the wave, or I'd, like the wave was part of my arm, and I would be like Aquaman or even a, a merman. So, this theory I'm kind of into. I mean, it makes sense for me. I mean, did I mention I also talked to fish? <laughs> no? Okay, so. Sorry, then I'm just bragging then. 
Coming in our halfway point at number five, we have life in the ice, not life on ice. That just sounds like an interesting scientific ice skating show that you would see when you were little when Disney on Ice was sold out or something like that. But anyway, back on topic, ice may just have covered the oceans three billion years ago as the sun was about a third less luminous. So this insanely thick layer of ice, maybe even hundreds of feet thick, could have protected fragile organic compounds in the water below from the ultraviolet light and harm from the cosmic impacts. The icy cold also may just have helped those compounds to have lived longer, allowing key reactions to take place. So we may have come from the ice, so maybe we're all just a bunch of ice people and that would give the song Cold as Ice a whole new meaning. Coming in at our number four spot, we have the great throwing arms. Archaeologists believe that all of us humans and apes began to evolve once we figured out how to throw a baseball. <laughs> Just kidding, again. Not a baseball, but when we developed the ability to hurl stones at high velocities. Probably, you know, for mostly activities like hunting to eat. Faring found some evidence at Dimenisi in a 1.8 million year old hominin site that Homo erectus came up with the incredible idea for public stonings to fend off predators and scare them away from their own kills. Now, these people were small, says Faring. This place was filled with big cats, so how did hominins survive? How did they make it all the way from Africa? Well, rock throwing could be partially the answer. He also argues that stoning other predators or animals was a social event that helped socialize them. Because it took many individuals to effectively fend off these cats, and they also became more intelligent the more they put their minds together. So there you go. Teamwork and sharing are our big takeaways from today's list. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have lightning strikes. Man, imagine how cool it would be if a bolt of lightning just struck the ground and BAM! There was a human being. Kind of like Thor. Yeah, that would be pretty sick, but obviously, it's not the case for us. Not really. Electric sparks can generate amino acids and sugars from an atmosphere loaded with water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen. At least, that's what was shown in the Miller Urey experiment that was reported back in 1953. It suggested that lightning may have helped in creating the building blocks of life here on Earth. Although, since the 50s, research has shown that the early atmosphere on Earth was actually low in hydrogen. So, while this one doesn't hold much more than that, it sounds wicked cool still. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the environmental battle of the fittest. Richard Potts, director of the Smithsonian. Smithsonian's Humans Origins program believes that humans evolved from our ape-like ancestors because of the change in our environments. Every time there was a change, we would then adapt to it and then continue on the path of evolution. Through the Savannah Hypothesis, many believe that our ancestors were then made to navigate the harsh and scary terrain by walking and moving themselves to new areas, especially because in most areas, food and water could be few and far between. So we adapted to our environment just as well as any other animal out there, but I got one major beef with this theory. Why the hell did we never learn how to camouflage? Is that too much to ask? And finally, coming in at number one, we have from space. Now, did you think we were actually gonna get through one video without one alien reference? No, good, because you would have been sorely mistaken. Many people believe we are just one chemical reaction after the other ever since the Big Bang. And we are all just stardust, which is actually kind of true and also probably a safe bet. But some people out there on the topic of who and where did we come from believe that we are actually aliens already. Maybe we were created in a whole nother galaxy or star system far, far away, and our mothership just dropped us off here millions of years ago. Then we evolved into the humans of today, and now the aliens are dropping in to see how their little science experiment is doing. Everything. Think of that? That would be pretty trippy, but hey, there is no real evidence on this one here, folks. But it is a really fun theory, and anything to do with aliens, as I'm sure you all know by now, will always grab my attention. But hey, in between this one and the lightning one, I don't know which one I prefer more. Lightning is still pretty cool. There you have it. That has been our top 10 unsettling human origin theories that might be true. What did you think? What was the most unsettling to you? I'll be honest, any theory that tries to answer what the human origin is, <laughs> It's pretty crazy to me. I mean, if you really think about it, the fact that we are even here and are conscious living beings that have made everything you see around us now from the ground up and have evolved is absolutely wild. Every time I think about it, my mind literally goes into a spiral. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Until next time, I have been your host, Dewey Stewart. Be good to yourself, friends, and I will see you all later. Bye bye.